Many people may not know this, but there are two types of ancient civilizations. There is the primitive, pre-industrial civilization, and then there is the advanced civilization. There is the preserved civilization, and then there is the lost civilization. Now, I'm going to explain this in a moment. First, I want to turn you guys on to an amazing podcast called The Council of Time. The host and speaker of this audio podcast, as some of you may already know, is known as Mike from Around the World. He is often a guest speaker on the Paul Begley Show, but you can find Mike's presentations on the website counciloftime.com. Now, Mike has this incredible ability to say things that would blow your mind without giving away too many details or even getting too deep into these subjects. He typically mentions something and then you have to take it from there and do more research on your own. He is great at reviewing scripture and ancient text and my favorite audio presentations of his are the ones he does on the book of Enoch. Recently, Mike brought something up that formed the foundation of this presentation. It's something that is so simple yet it explains so much. And I want to discuss this a bit today because I believe it's important to know and understand. You know, with all the scientific studies on the ancient world, scientists who dig up the earth to discover and study the remains of ancient civilizations, Egyptologists, archaeologists, etc., etc., people who study, decipher, and translate ancient texts, even with ancient astronaut theorists. I never hear them explain why our ancient history is so fragmented and mysterious, when the answer is so clear and simple. It is the reason why in today's world, if something were to happen to our world, if something were to take most of us out and civilization had to start over again, the only evidence of a single person's existence would probably be their tombstone. Welcome back to Woodward TV. Before we get started, please do me a favor and take a quick second to click the thumbs up button on your screen. I would truly appreciate that. So let me start with an audio clip from the presentation I listened to so that you can hear it for yourself. I'll link the full audio in the description box below. I'll play the clip and then I'll give you my take on it. The history of this earth is so obscure. It, it's somewhat of an enigma because civilizations that are advanced. Let me ask you guys something. Why is there no evidence of an advanced civilization on the earth? It's a real simple answer. Maybe this will help you out. We find old civilizations. We find etchings on stone. Those are archaic and old. What about the new civilizations? Somebody says cover up. I say no, no cover up. Why is there no evidence of advanced civilizations all over the place? Why? Why? Bear with me too, why? Why would there be that? You got it burned up. So here it is. The more advanced you become, the less you write on stone. You don't etch things on stone. You start manufacturing everything, right? You don't write, you don't etch calendars in stone anymore. The stonework decreases because everything is being manufactured. Just like us, we used to leave a record of things on paper. We don't do that anymore. We leave a record of things on disk. So if something happened in our civilization, all the advancements that we have made are gonna vanish overnight. They're just gonna vanish. 
right? Because we have all of our information is on the internet. Well, guess what happens if the internet breaks down? If nobody can start up a server, once it's all clumped and melted together, it's gone. So we essentially, the more advanced you become, uh, the, the greater the possibility it is you're going to erase yourself when something happens. You leave nothing behind, right? So the only thing people would find of the civilization today would be certain footers and, and some of the old buildings that we have preserved. Some of the older writings that we preserve. That's it. That's what happened a long time. Same thing happened a long time ago. And so they found this out a while ago. I mean, a long while ago. They've been playing with dates the whole time. They can essentially have people believe just about everything. They really can. But when it comes to an advanced civilization, they're not going to put their information on paper. They're not going to enter it in stone. They're not going to do that. But we do one thing. We can't help ourselves but to do if we get fascinated with old stuff. And so what do we do? We discover ways to preserve old things. Like some of the stone entrings that we have found. If something happened to us right now, then in the future, people would find these old stones. Now, of course, these old stones, we didn't make those. We found those and preserved them. So then somebody would come along and find those preserved stones and say, wow, they were back in the stone ages. Right? They were living in caves. They wouldn't understand the process. You know, historically, there's a narrative every single time. In essence, nobody was in caves. Something else took place. Something else they... People just don't explain today. Nobody was in caves. Humanity has helped out and guided. Right? The, the mystery is solved in the Bible. It really is. The mystery is solved in the Bible. Every single time. Humanity is aided in going forward. In fact, humanity has always been aided in going forward. Humanity did never made it by itself. Humanity has been guided just as we are guided. Are we not? Just as we have supernatural protection. Just as God sends angels to intervene in the affairs of mankind so that we don't kill ourselves and destroy ourselves. Right? Just like when they tried to start nuclear wars in the past that you don't know about. This UFO stuff broke out. It essentially causing our systems to become an earth. They won't fire, right? He got so bad at one point that uh, every time a UFO was spotted near a military facility, Russia would call the USA, the USA would call China. Everybody would start calling each other saying, hey, it's not us, it's them. That protocol exists today. Did you know that? Today, that protocol exists. There are manuals on how to contact your counterparts to let them know that it is the others the others they used to refer to them as the others and you had to report that so that nobody mistakenly starts a nuclear war do you know that so anything that happens to a nuclear weapon you have to report that it, they quickly get online with each other they have open lines of communication during kennedy's time uh in reagan's time things almost started because of that they had to really clarify the communication it wasn't from anybody it was from those things right? 2006, all defense computers were shut down at the exact same time. All nuclear codes were changed at the exact same time. That's when all the recruiting computers went down and nobody could recruit anybody. That lasted for about nine hours. On, in every nation, all of them went down. Nothing else went down except for the defense computers. Hmm? So, here we are. They don't discuss that. People do discuss, you know, the possibility of life outside of humanity but they they never go over the narrative of what these other beings have been doing okay so let's stop and think about ancient egypt just as an example here information about ancient egypt comes from a variety of sources and those sources are one archaeological evidence. This includes artifacts, monuments, tombs, temples, and buildings excavated by archaeologists. This comes from sites including the Pyramids of Giza, the Valley of the Kings, and temples such as Karnak and Luxor. Next, 
Ancient Egyptians left behind written records in the form of hieroglyphics, which were inscribed on monuments, tombs, stelae, and papyrus scrolls. The Rosetta Stone, which features the same text in Greek, Demotic, and hieroglyphics, was vital in deciphering these texts. Many papyrus scrolls have been discovered that contain religious texts, administrative records, legal documents, and literature, such as the Book of the Dead, medical text, and the Tale of Sinu. There were Greek and Roman historians, ancient writers such as Herodotus, Strabo, and Pliny the Elder, who wrote about Egypt, and they provided the external perspectives on Egyptian society, their culture, their history, but their accounts are often mixed with mythology. Then you have the study of mummies and artifacts such as pottery, jewelry, tools, and everyday objects. And these things only give us clues about the Egyptians' way of life, their beliefs, and their technological achievements. And today, we have to use our advanced technology like CT scans to allow scientists to learn more about mummification practices, health and diet in ancient Egypt. The art and reliefs found in tombs, temples, and monuments only offer visual representations of Egyptian mythology, their daily life, and their historical events. And most of the time, they are just depictions of pharaohs, gods, and scenes of agriculture, war, and rituals. And all that is based on primitive evidence. Information about the Sumerians, one of the earliest known civilizations in the world. What are the sources we have for that information? Cuneiform tablets. The Sumerians developed one of the earliest writing systems, cuneiform which was inscribed on clay tablets. Thousands of these tablets have been discovered containing records of trade, laws, literature, administrative documents, and religious texts, including the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is one of the oldest known pieces of literature, and the Code of ur -Namu, one of the earliest legal codes. When they dig into the region of ancient Sumer, primarily in modern-day southern Iraq, they have uncovered cities such as Ur, Uruk, Lagash, Eridu. And based on those discoveries, it tells us about Sumerian urban planning, architecture, and daily life. Ziggurats, large temple complexes, are among the most iconic structures found at these sites. Think about all the ancient buildings we keep preserved mixed with all of our modern buildings and modern architecture. How are people a thousand years from now supposed to make sense of that? Especially when we tear down modern buildings and rebuild new ones that will not last as long as buildings made from stone. Think about this. The Akkadians... Babylonians, the Assyrians, they are the ones who succeeded the Sumerians in Mesopotamia. They are also the ones who preserved and transmitted Sumerian culture, their language and their text. These later civilizations continued to use Sumerian language in religious and scholarly contexts, even as their own languages became dominant, you see? A lot of the things we have today are made from materials that break down and disintegrate over time. And most of this stuff we don't preserve. We throw it in the trash and it gets recycled. How long can you possibly keep a book around unless you intentionally preserve it and bury it in a vault in the ground? Everything that's in digital format these days, forget about it. Let's not even get into money. If we somehow lost all the digital financial information, most people would be broke. Unless you had some hard assets, unless you still had some cash or coins stored somewhere. Isn't that scary? Also, 
Here's something else you have to keep in mind when it comes to ancient ruins and ancient civilizations. Anything made from metal, most of that stuff is going to disintegrate over time. If you have untreated steel or iron, that stuff rusts relatively quickly when exposed to moisture and oxygen. In humid or coastal environments, noticeable rust can appear within a few days to weeks. I said a few days to weeks, and we know this. If I left untreated steel, that can structurally degrade over several years, depending on the severity of the exposure. Galvanized steel coated with a layer of zinc to protect against corrosion, the zinc layer can protect the steel for 20 to 50 years or more, again, depending on the environment. In coastal areas where salt accelerates corrosion, the lifespan may be shorter. Stainless steel is highly resistant to rust and corrosion due to its chromium content. It can last many decades, even in harsh environments, but it may still corrode over time if exposed to highly saline or acidic conditions. Aluminum can last for decades in most environments. It corrodes more quickly in highly acidic or alkaline conditions, but in typical outdoor conditions, aluminum can last 50 years or more without significant degradation. But that's only about 50 years or so. Zinc corrodes relatively slowly. It can last 50 years or more, depending on environmental conditions. Zinc roofing, for example, often has a lifespan of 70 to 100 years. Ancient lead pipes and roofing have been known to survive for over a thousand years, although lead is less commonly used today due to health concerns. The only metals that really last are what? Copper and bronze? Copper can last for many decades to centuries, even in harsh environments. Ancient copper structures and artifacts have been known to survive for thousands of years. Ancient bronze artifacts including statues and tools, have survived for thousands of years, even when exposed to the elements. But, see, that's copper and bronze, which is what tends to be left behind from the ancient world, you see? Rare metals like gold, silver, platinum, etc., jewelry, they do find that stuff, don't they? Do you see the difference in the metal objects they find and the metal objects they don't? So, of course, there aren't going to be any skyscrapers left behind. There aren't going to be any cars or airplanes left behind. No computers or mobile devices. No electrical towers, cell towers, or wires. How come these things aren't factored into the equation when we are talking about the ancient world? It didn't take thousands of years for us to develop all this stuff we have today. It only took a few hundred years. So why would we conclude the ancient world didn't have enough time to do all this? Especially when we know most of this stuff can be easily burned down and destroyed. If you have things being destroyed by fire or water, those two things can pretty much destroy anything. All these years we've been relying on science and historians to paint us the best picture of the past as possible. But we've always been looking through a small window, only able to see what's been left behind. From the day the first car hit the road in 1885, only in what, 139 years? Some people are now driving around in cyber trucks. We call that a clue. Anyway, that's all for now, and there is more to come. I just wanted to bring this topic to your attention as we go forward. I'm going to link up another recommended video for today. Watch that video. It will be linked on screen at the top right corner of this video, also in the description box and pinned comment below. Again, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Everyone have a great day. Take care, and as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.